Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Kennel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as we find a tree, a single tree, leafless and dead, in the middle of the wasteland. I will show you. I, I say wasteland, but it kind of it kind of looked like it is. It's weird. This is a weird place over here. And we're exploring it. We're we're trying to figure out if there's interesting things for us to see. I'm kind of going for the uh, with the map to try and, you know. Just see things and all that. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Let's look first at the tree and see what happens. The tree must be the last remnant of an ancient forest. Though why this particular trunk has survived when all the others fell is not clear. Let's climb up there. Thinking you could get a better view of the land from the upper branches. That's a nice, interesting... Yeah, that's an interesting idea. You swing yourself onto the lowest bow. Uh, or buff, I don't know how to say that, uh, branch, let's go with branch, then up onto the next. A moment later, you are on the ground with a painful thump. You didn't sleep, you reached for a branch, and then suddenly, it was not there. Let's try climbing again. You try climbing once more, but this time, all the lower branches of the tree are lift as one, like a dancer rising the, raising the hem of his cloak before he begins to spin. You step back, watching the lifeless tree, the branches hover a moment and then lower back down. You turn to walk away from the tree when you are arrested by a sword. It is a voice. Stranger! The voice is faint, yet echoing. Oh, apparently, the, yeah. Stranger. Stranger. Let's look for the speaker. You look around behind the tree over your shoulder, but the endless plain stretches away in all directions. There is no one in sight. Do I have a spell? What... What spell would work here? I have no idea what would work here. So let's see, we have Tell. Oh, the Read Minds. Yeah, that might work. Let's go with that. Looking for the stars, you craft a magic, pulling on the cloth skullcap as you do so. You reach out with your mind, but what you find is not what you expect. There are no humans, or even any creatures in the vicinity. Instead, there is an intelligence. Something heavy and dark and thick, with thoughts like ancient oil. Oil, let's listen. You stay silent and listen. You hear slow, murmuring thoughts echoing backwards and forwards as though they were being whispered at the end of a long, long tunnel. But if there are words, they are in a language you do not know. Um, I think... Oh, the voices fade. Oh, no, no, who's there? Stranger replies the voice from somewhere above you. I believe you. Show yourself. You declare. The voice seems to shiver with a kind of dry chuckle. I do not hide, it replies. Let's look it up at the tree. Oh. You look up into the branches of the tree to find the bare twigs have curved themselves into a human face. An old man's face that looks down at you with overturned mouth. Stranger, the tree face declares wistfully. You are lost. Um. What makes you say I'm lost? All who enter this place are lost, the face replies sadly. This is a land accursed. Every soul within is lost. Uh, will you aid me? You ask. The branches flutter and break in a sudden gust of wind, the face disappearing for a moment. You seek the whereabouts of Shadrach of Badubak, the face declares. Yes, how will I find him? You ask. Turn like a leaf in the morning. The face replies, sighing a deep sorrow of ash and autumn color. The, to the fishtail rock, he is expecting you. Another stronger breeze catches the branches and disrupts them, and when they settle, the face has disappeared. Okay, I'm not going to shout anything. I'm just going to walk on. Uh, but let's see. Let's, let's try and figure out what happens here. So, turn like a leaf in the morning, which means... Oh, uh, I don't know how it goes. This might be... It's not common knowledge... But, I mean, it, 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 uh, some people don't know this, but wind generally has one direction, right? Uh, when you, wherever you leave, you kind of get always wind from the east or always wind from the west. But it's uh, across a certain um, para parallel in, in, the, um, in the earth. So, closer, the, like, it, it changes whether it's from the east or from the, or from the west. So, it could be that the writer didn't know this and just thinks that the, the wind always comes from the east or from the west, depending on where he lives. Now, I believe they are from California, uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Jackson. Uh, Steve, Steve Jackson? Steve Jackson, yeah, not Stephen. Um, I believe he's from California, but I'm not sure. California is, if I remember correctly, uh, or if I think correctly, I think it's a little bit south from where 
Portugal is. And uh, here in Portugal, we get east, uh, winds from the east. So I suppose California uh, also gets win winds from the east. So if that is... We need to go to the west because the leaf goes in the wind, you know that? So yeah, that's my, my thought right there. To the fishtail rock, he's expecting you. But I don't think this is as important as this one over here uh, because I need to find the fishtail rock. Let's walk on. You walk away from the shade of the tree. That looks like a fishtail, doesn't it? Kinda. Kinda. I don't see any rock here that looks like a fishtail. And uh, you'd figure that you'd have to find the rock early on in the game to, for him to be able to tell you where the serpents are. Man, the, the, the game is gonna be a, a lot of fun. Okay, so we need to go there. Um, but how do I do that? Uh, well, I need to go back here. Let's go. You walk on across the plain until you meet the edge of the old road. The sun is hot now. The cu road curves gently in the near distance. You make out something through the haze. Not a tower, but a spire of rock. It seems to flicker strangely. You continue along. Yep, we go east. Yeah, I don't think the wind direction is necessary, because it doesn't tell me where the wind comes from, so I, I don't know. The line of the road curves gently as you follow it. The sun has reached its highest point now. Out on the shade, uh, out of the shade, the air is baking hot. The road forks here, with the main path snaking up the mountainside to the east. Rocks have tumbled down the slope, all but covered the road. Uh, let's look east. So that's the, that's the road right there. You cast your gaze east towards the towering Badu back ridge. The main peak is lost in haze at the end of the long winding road that climbs the slope. And what about north? Looking north, the road winds along the rocky edges of the foothills. A particularly impressive stone stupa, or stupa stands out a little way along. Stone... Oh, I know what it is. Stones shift and move underfoot as you walk. It's not a fishtail rock. That's a... Uh, I know what... It's like... I, it, yeah, I think I know what it is. It's just made of stones. But there's there's an entrance, so let's go there. The ground on the foot turns into rocks and scree. The sun is becoming is beginning to tower to lower. The air begins to cool. You pause to rest in the shadow of a large rock spire that sticks out, uh, sticks from the dirt like a claw through the through the cloth. Let's look at the rock. The rock is a single shattered spire, perhaps once part of a mountain a mountain range to the east, or perhaps driven up through the ground by some geological quirk. At the base of the rock is the mouth of a cave. I am gonna look inside the cave. You approach the cave with one hand on your blade. The cave appears to go back some distance into pitch blackness. Someone seems to have scratched a message into the rock inside the cave. It is only just legible and must be ancient. In the thin sunlight falling into the cave, you can make out the ancient scratched message with some difficulty. I wonder if we come here later in the in the day, we're going to be able to read this a little bit better. Of course, we can cast a spell here. And I believe, let's see, stranger, I am waiting. Very long ago, summon you. Call my name to the skies and I will. Something Adra. Okay, well, I need to fi find out who that Adra is. So, the cave in the cliff. That's not him, I don't think. Shadrach? Oh, yeah. Adra could be... Could, could Shadrach? The hermit can help you. He can be found at the fishtail rock. Yeah. So, let's see if that can be construed as Shadrach. Yep. Shadrach. This is from Shadrach. Uh, let's try calling out a name. Let's go with that. The message on the wall suggested calling out a name. But you... Uh, but what name would you call? <laughs> Vic. Flanker. Slang. Oh, man. We don't have Korga? Come on. Shadrach right there. You cry the name across the plains, and the echo of it seems to set off a distant avalanche. The ground begins to shake and rumble, and you stagger to your knees. The very earth is moving, as though it was splitting or merging back together. You reach down to steady yourself, only to find that grass is growing between your fingers. Oh, I got teleport. What? Wait, 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 wait. So, so this is... So these things... They're time anomalies sort of thing? Because this looks like, I mean, a time dilation thingy or something. I don't know. Time dilation is probably not, it's not what I mean. It's like a time, I tr time traveled. You pick yourself unsteady, unsteadily to your feet, feeling sick and unwell. Everything around you is the same, but everything is different. The rock has two spires for one thing. The, he does? I didn't see that. Yeah, well, didn't he have that before? I don't know. The cave seems smaller and darker, and in a fire pit built in the, into the scrub at its mouth, a fire is burning. From inside, you hear the gentle sound of singing. 
let's approach... So, uh, in a fire pit built into the scrub at its mouth, a fire is burning. And from inside, a gentle so sound of singing. Okay, why is it gentle? I That tells me that Shadrach is a, a woman. Uh, but I, that it, I might be it might be just my misogynistic side saying that, because men can be gentle as well, I suppose. Uh, let's see, approach the fire. You approach the fire, the sound of singing from inside the cave grows louder. Let's call out for Shadrach. Shadrach, you cry, I'm here. Oh, it's just a, an old man, not a woman, but uh, he sings well, so there we go. The singing stops abruptly. There is a coughing and wheezing sound, and then an old man hobbles out from the cave, limping on, on a stick. I wonder why they didn't um, treat the, the pictures this time around uh, in this game. It looks like it just scanned them, and uh, that was that. Looks you, you can see here, yeah, that was actually... If I may say so, it's quite shoddy work, to be honest. I've done quite a few of, uh, quite a little bit of scanning myself in my old days. Um, and this stuff, you can see that this is the reach of the book right there. <laughs> Come on, this is easy to fix on Photoshop or anywhere, really. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's you. Oh, no, actually, I didn't read this. Uh, there's something. Uh, this must be Shadrach himself uh, limping on a stick. But you recognize the face as that of the tree spirit you met earlier. Oh. Ah, it's you, he declares, speaking thickly through his, re his beard. I have been expecting you. He waves a hand around the landscape. Welcome back. Um, welcome back? Just so. You have come a long, long way, my Annalander friend, he smiles. I know your mission, of course. I know all about you. And you know about me, I hope. My name is Shadrach. Uh, yeah, I have the eagle's message over here. You pull the ma See, I told you I should have kept that. I didn't actually tell you, but I kept that because I knew I was going to need to use it or something. Because nobody was going to steal... Nobody was going to get me and steal my stuff and see that and be like, Ooh, uh, now I know who you are. Because I just tell everybody who I am and nobody even gives a damn. Or somebody, some people do, but yeah. You pull the message from your pack. I was given this, you explain. It mentions you. He scans it and looks up. Your diviners are most impressive. Or, uh, hmm, perhaps our meeting has simply been remembered. Yeah, that is more likely. Then, oh yeah, see, this is the past. Of course it was going to be the past, not the future. Then his eyes narrow as he reads on. Seven serpents. Yes, but now I see why they have sent you to me. Um, can you help? That depends in some ways, he says, he nods slowly, thinking. I know your journey I know your journey here from Carey. Tell me, how fares the city? Well, it stands still. Shadrach nods deeply. I watched an army of March goblins scale the the cliffs armed with swords and axes, he says. There should be a smoke rising at the horizon, but I see no such thing. He grabs a handful of dry grass from the ground and tosses it in it into the fire pit, where wait a minute. You saw that and you see no such thing? What do you mean? Oh, wait a minute, he, 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 yeah, the dry grass, uh, dry grass from the ground and tosses into the fire pit, where it blazes for a moment into flame. He appears to change topic. Yeah, he saw something in the fire or something, I don't know. I must warn you that no one from Annaland has ever crossed the backlands alone and survived. Well, do you want to come with me? I, I, I'd be fine. Um, uh, what are the dangers, I ask? I'm trying to be as pragmatic as possible with all these questions, just to get, I mean, I am sure if I chose the other ones, the game would look out for me or give me interesting things, but let's see. The land is cursed. Yeah, I was told that as well. He, he replies, the very rocks and earth here are lost. Things become unstuck, and you have now become unstuck yourself. Okay, can this, can this curse be lifted? Shadrach appears to consider this for a moment, and finally replies, no, most likely not. He demonstrates with his finger as he speaks, twisting them together. The old world and the ancient world have grown together like thorny bushes. To journey through one is to journey through the other. The ancient world? You ask, looking about yourself at the fields of grass that have appeared to replace the desert. Ishtara, he says, the place that was my home. Shadrach, oh, and apparently my home as well, because the first thing he told me was welcome back. Hmm. And I believe I... So, from what he said, he said something about remembering as well. So, I believe... I'm not sure if this is going to be answered pretty soon or not, but I believe my soul or my character might have come from here and been teleported in time to the future for some reason. Uh, probably not to lift this particular curse. Uh, and then do something, I don't know. Um, Ish Ishtara, he says. Uh, he bows his head. You are most welcome. W wait, 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 wait. Welcome back. No, yeah, welcome back. I'm most welcome back. Unexpectedly, Shadrach stumbles. He smiles at you weakly. Oh. Are you unwell? You ask. This whole land is unwell, he replies. I will not be able to stay very long, he gasps. Suddenly, 
Huh. Please, ask me what you need to know and then leave. <laughs> Do you play Swindle Stones? I'm gonna show him the Serpent Ring. You take the Serpent Ring from your pack and show it to Shadrach. Do you know what this is? You ask. Shadrach says, accepts it thoughtfully, turning the item over in his thick palm. I've never seen one, he says, but I would say it was a Serpent Ring. There are only two or three of these in the ancient world, or just one, going round and around. You can never be sure. Lorak also has an interesting time traveling mechanic, so he could be from the ancient world himself. You guys remember Lorak? Uh, the mage at the end, and we found his tomb, and uh, we found him that he didn't really like me too much. So what does he do? You ask. I believe it is the component of a spell, he replies, though quite what spell I fear I do not know. I am no sorcerer, you understand. Then he hands the ring back to you. Try the wizard of the mountain, he asks. Climb from here through the trees. Shadrach is shivering slightly now. His face is pale behind the ruddy beard. Yeah, he's gonna die, isn't he? Um, so what do you know of, this ser of the seven serpents? Uh, you ask quickly, keen to learn what you must while you can. The serpents are most terrible, Shadrach answers. I have often seen them, but they are no mere snakes. Do you know, do you know of their legend? Um, just, he's not going to know how to kill them. There are no mere snakes. The serpents are most terrible. What about the legend? I, uh, I think, I think, I think I, I don't need the other, the other question, so I'm just going to, no, 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 no. No, I don't want to select that. Damn it. Oh, boy. I apologize. Um, approach the fire. Call off Shadrach right there, and he appears. Um, welcome back. That's what I asked before. Um, show him the eagle's message, because I jumped at that, uh, that choice when I saw it. Um, did I ask, can you help? Uh, yeah, I think so. That depends in some ways, he says. I know your journey here from Carrie. Tell me of that city. It still stands, and he says some stuff. Um, what are the dangers? I asked. The land is cursed. Can the curse be lifted? I asked. Yeah. The ancient world, I asked after that. Uh, so I showed him the serpent ring, uh, and I asked what it does. There we go. And now we're back here. What do you know? Uh, I know, actually, I actually asked this. Uh, so, let's go with this one. Uh, do you know of their legend? Uh, just tell me, no, uh, yeah, tell me, tell me. Shadrach nods, then coughs sharply. It is said that thousands of years from now, a few years ago for you, perhaps, the Archmage of Mampag fought and slew a mighty Hydra, which dwelt in the caves of High Zaman. We have heard of this as well, High Zaman. So formidable a foe was this creature that the Archmage took its severed heads back to Mampang, where he used his dark hearts to resurrect them as seven-winged serpents. They became his personal messengers, his assassins, his force in dark places. Uh, I, yeah, don't, don't play stupid. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go for that one. They're undead. They could be something else. How do I kill them? Shadrach nods. A good question, he says. Each serpent has a spirit to sustain it that grants a great power, but also a powerful weakness. Discover these weaknesses and you may be able to defeat the serpents. Shadrach coughs and shivers. Friend, he murmurs, I, I wish I did not have to go, but I must. I am, to, I am to close the circle. He gets his stick and pushes himself up to his feet. Um, farewell then, and thank you. Shadrach, Shadrach nods. We will meet again. We have already met, I think. He waves a hand at his cave. I have left one more thing for you in here. Travel well. Remember, when you walk through the fields of Ishtara, you are safe from the serpents. serpents. But if you do not return to your own time, you will never defeat them. How can I travel between these lands? Oh, nice. Uh, look to the beacons, he answers cryptically. If any have survived into your time, they will hold a little of our ancient light still. There is one to the north of here, at least, by the river. Go there. Reaching over, he places his hand on either side of your head, and you feel a great lightness entering your body. That done, he turns and stamps away from the grass, and he healed me there. So I need to go north of here, by the river, and there's a, 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 a thing. Let him go. That's what he said. He leaves, heading north across the plains and fading into the hazy dust that hangs in the air. You muse on what you have seen. It seems there is more to the backlands than there first appeared. You are left alone by the cave mouth once more. Uh, let's look inside the cave. He said something that he left something for me there. 
You look into the cave again, and this time find a strange horn hanging from a hook on the wall. It is ornately carved from strange twisting shell with a hide of leather. It is a gale horn on a very few one of uh, very few in existence. You lift it down with great care. What? It's a spe it, it's gotta be for a spell, right? But what does he do? A gale horn. I don't know what a gale he is. A gale, a gale. What could it be? I'm gonna blow it. You, uh, don't blow the game blow up. You place the horn onto your lips and blow a note. It is clear and mellow pitched and makes the air stir with echoes. You suddenly thank the hermit for his gift. That was good. Let's look around the plain. You pause to look around the plain. Thin scrub grass stretches away north and west to the east, and the mountains are gleaming in the afternoon sun. The whole world seems to have come alive around, but surely this magic cannot last. You make your way back to the old road that runs to, past the rock. To the north, you catch a glimpse of the tower Shadrach mentioned, covered in green ivy. West, you notice a young tree that surely wasn't there before. Yeah, well, it was, but... Uh... Oh wait a minute! Did I get that? Did I get that? Did I get the? Did I get the? The the clue? The clue? Um, cave in the cliff. I did. There is a cave in the cliff. We're gonna be able to climb back with this. But it's now bigger. This thing. That's what. Um. So that is a, a beacon. That is a beacon. That's what that means. I think that would be a beacon. Would there be another one around? Not in this part over here. And certainly it doesn't look like. It doesn't look like we can go that way. So, I want to explore this. It, there's another beacon over there. Yeah. Definitely there's two beacons. There's another one. Nah, those are not beacons. Those are observation. Uh, those, are, those are observed observatories. It does look like a, yeah, it's it's supposed to it's a periscope because it, it's an observatory. So what do we have here? Well, let's see where we're going. We're going south. Uh where did he say, say we should go? Uh What did he say he sh we should do? Uh, let's see. Uh, I believe... Yes. So, so... They became a messenger. Okay, so... Uh, discovered these weaknesses and able to defeat. I have left one. I remember... He said something about the trees or the... North of here, or at least by the river. Go there. Reaching the body... So, he didn't say anything. But... What do you th know of the seven serpent? He said something about the trees, didn't he? Uh, it should be around here. You guys are probably seeing it right now, maybe. Uh, climb from here through the trees. There it is. Try the wizard of the mountain. Climb from here through the trees. He says. So it's gotta be this thing. But I wanna go back. I wanna go back over there. Okay, let's go to the tree first and see what we can do. You head out across the prairie. The winds pick up at, as the evening draws on. It will be night soon again already. You squat at, uh, swat at pestering flies and midges. The dead tree you saw earlier is now a young, strong sapling. In its shadow, uh, in its shadow, a woman sits cross-legged with eyes closed. Let's look at the woman. You watch the woman for a moment. She is breathing in and out slowly and murmuring under her breath. Perhaps she is praying. And around her neck, she wears what looks like a giant's tooth on a leather string. Okay, I have two of those, so it's fine. A fleet of long, thin birds swoop and career overhead, snatching flies from the steamy hair. Um, let's look at the tree. The tree is relatively young, fresh and strong, as though it has been only planted a few minutes before. It is... Really? Hmm. It is hard to believe this is the same tree you saw before, so tall and so very dead. But the position is the same. Let's look around first. You ignore the woman for a moment and look around the plain. South and west, the great fault lines of the cliff shields out of the sky. And at its top, it seems a dark, as dark as night. North, the grass stretches away towards a distant flashing line that seems to cut across the land. Let's greet the woman. You approach the meditating woman and cough quietly. Greetings. The woman opens one eye and shakes her head sadly. You're meant to be over there, she says, pointing a little way to the east. Uh, what do you mean? She shakes her head, opening her other eye. No matter. They tell me I will get better at divination with practice. She offers her hand. Well, let's shake her hand. You shake her hand and she laughs. How very formal. Well met, stranger. My name is Elthera. Welcome to Ishtara, the land of peace and plenty. Uh, well, this... Let's simply nod. Let's pretend we know what's going on. And we kind of maybe do. You nod. She nods politely in return. Will you sit with me a while? Uh... Let's sit with her and not ask anything for right now. You sit down on the long grass opposite her. She smiles at you. I need to practice my third eye, she, she says. 
and I'm not gonna make a joke there, tapping in what appears to be a small gem stuck uh, to her forehead. Perhaps we could play. And reaching into a pocket, she produces a handful of small stones. Swindle stones? You ask. She looks amused. Swindle stones? My teacher has used that name before, but that is not what we call them. They are mind stones. I try to read your thoughts as you try to read mine. I uh, will you play? Uh, you can read minds. She shakes her head. No, I am learning, but the sense is weak with me. Please help me practice. I could cast a spell. So what is the stake? You ask. She laughs. Perhaps if you win, I will give you the dice. How is that? Well, let's play, because I am very good with this. And she does. Ha that doesn't look like a. That doesn't look like a a, a, a gem. But sure, let's uh, roll the dice and see what happens. So, let's go ahead and uh, say, when I came this way earlier, it was a wasteland. And she's gonna say, a wasteland? This place is a land of plenty and peace. Well, we're gonna continue this game on the next episode. For now, I'm Curl RPG, and this has been Sorcery. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.